the next recipient, I think, uh, really embodies the foundation of the Court Watch program itself. Um, so, in 2006, I had this brainchild of an idea that I would start a blog. And on free blogger software, um, I created this blog and I, you know, really didn't think anyone was actually going to read it and I figured, you know, I'd write a few things, vent my spleen and uh, move on with my life. Um, but lo and behold, and to the surprise of me, certainly, people started reading it and commenting on it, and it, be, it began to take on a life of its own. Um, and we started, you know, very basic covering uh, politics in the city of Davis. Um, but we also covered some other issues that bled into the courts. And over time, I started getting contacted by these people, and their relatives had been, uh, they felt tr uh, treated unfairly or unjustly in the court system. And, um, you know, after the fact, it's very difficult to look at a court case. You know, if you're talking about a city council meeting, you have a video of the city council meeting, it's a finite period of time. And, and you can go back and look and see what decisions made, and you can cover it pretty accurately, even a couple weeks after the fact. If you miss the court trial, um, you can spend thousands of dollars to get court transcripts. Um, if it's a lengthy trial, those court transcripts will fit in boxes that will fit in your living room. <laughs> and maybe in a year, you can go through it and, and see what happened in the trial. That doesn't seem like a very good use of my time, especially since at that time, especially, I was a one-man show. Um, so I got invited uh, to this house. Um, I think it was Carmichael, but I could be wrong. Um, and their, their relative had been um, convicted, and they were, they were shocked. Uh, they were not expecting him to be convicted. Uh, they felt like he was wrongly accused. Uh, so I came out and I, I met with his wife and his sister-in-law and his father-in-law, I think. Uh, and it's been a few years. Um, and uh, over the course of an hour, hour and a half, they laid out this story. Um, and then they invited me to come to his sentencing, which I did. That was really a shocking moment in my life. Uh, so the man was accused of uh, raping his uh, adopted daughter over a period of five years or so. Um, and I thought, you know, okay, you know, 10, 20 years, somewhere around there. Uh, meanwhile, uh, you know, I sit in court and, and the judge starts calculating the time and he gets up to 378 years and I'm like, what? There are murderers that, that that don't get 378 year terms. And this guy's getting 378 years. And, that, you know, I understand. I was naive and I hadn't uh, seen that before. But that was very shocking to me. Um, so I had to kind of come to grips with that for a little while. And I still wasn't sure, you know, if the family was correct that he was innocent I, because I hadn't seen any evidence one way or the other. Uh, you know, they said he's innocent. They could be wrong. Um, but I, I met with a friend of mine uh, who was going to law school at the time, and I said, you know, I need a way to get into the courtroom uh, so that we know when these problematic cases are coming down and we can cover them. And I said, hey, you know, there, there's a university over here. I wonder if we can get some uh, interns to cover uh, court trials. So me being brilliant and everything, on December 22nd, I put a Craigslist ad up saying, hey, anyone who wants to intern, um, send us an application. Now, how many do you think I got? 23. 23. One of them was this lady right here, by the way. Um, so, over the course of the next few weeks, uh, we, we did a couple rounds of interviews, and we've never had to do this since, but uh, we selected five people, of which Kathy was one of them. 
Um, and, and, and we went in, into the courthouse and started covering stuff. Um, so, so now back to uh, the issue. So Ajay Dev, um, in 2009, uh, was sentenced to 378 years in prison. Um, and his family decided that they were not just going to sit around and accept that. And so over the course of time, uh, they mobilized marches. Uh, and, and when they mobilize a march, you know, we're not talking, you know, 100 people one march and, and five people the next march. We're talking two, 300 people every single time. It's an amazing turnout. Um, and, and, and they really um, not only galvanized the work in the community, but they were able uh, to really, you know, zero in on issues, problems that not only affected Ajay's case, but affected every case here in YOLO. And, and they were able to become an agent for change and other, other people that were wrongly accused or felt that they were mistreated in trial would, would come to them. Um, and, and it was an amazing thing. Um, so I have to tell you, um, you know, uh, they filed an appeal last year. Uh, I read through the appeal. I am now convinced, 100% um, certainty, that Ajay Dev is innocent. And, you know, I think there was prosecutorial misconduct, but I think, I, I think Judge Fall, who's mostly a good judge, um, really screwed up that case. And he lost his patience. Um, he took testimony uh, from the victim and used her to translate a key segment of uh, a phone conversation that the Davis police had set up between her and Ajay. Um, and and the, basically the entire case turned on that translation and they allowed the victim to do it. And, you know, it's not like me calling, you know, somebody on the phone and somebody recording it. They're speaking uh, Nepalese and, and, and kind of meandering between English and Nepalese. And, and, and the translation process really needed a professional to do it. And even the professionals were, were um, unconvinced that the word that he said uh, was, was translated correctly. Um, and, and, you know, other than that, there's really no evidence uh, to put this man away. Um, so, one of the people um, that has really kept this uh, movement alive um, through, uh, through a series of emails and a, a change.com or .org uh, petition and all sorts of things is Patty Purcell. And I call that Patty, um, who I've been working with off and on. And I said, Patty, I want to honor you, but she was in Connecticut. I said, you've got to come out here. You haven't been to a Vanguard event. I am not going to honor you unless you come out here. 